Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another Throwback Thursday with me, Peter, the Master of Hoppets, checking out classic and nostalgic beers, nostalgic styles, nostalgic styles, classic styles, just all that beer that you think of once in a while from back in the day. Uh, today's episode, I've been really excited about shooting because it's one of my favorite beers and one of my favorite, no, my favorite Trappist beer. Uh, I've reviewed this early on on the channel. I tried to watch some of the review. I couldn't. <laughs> It was so cringeworthy. Oh my god, I'm just like, I'm just such a little kid. But hey, it was when the beer interest started. I mean, sitting there and looking at my book from Michael Jackson and all this. And it's fun. If you want to watch it, just look up Master Pop It's in Orval. But it's going to be fun to revisit this beer because, yeah, it's Orval. So, Orval for me is, as I said, it's probably my favorite Trappist beer. And I just think it's just a fantastic classic. And it's such a cool beer because almost every single time you have it, it's different. Because if you have it fresh aged, you know, it really, it, it's so different. And because of the secondary fermentation with Brettanomyces, specifically the Brusselensis variant of Brettanomyces. And most of you guys probably know this beer by now. The unique fucking vial bottle. It just looks amazing. The label is, it's just so iconic, you know? A lot of Belgian Trappist ales are very icon iconic, but I think one of the most iconic just in its design and the simplicity of the frickin' design is this beer. I think this is also where a lot of people who are into funky beers, this is where they started their journey. And uh, they're like, ooh, can beer taste like that? So if you don't know already, I mentioned it kind of a few times, but it's made with Brettanomyces, but that's one of the very unique characteristics for this beer, especially compared to other Belgian Trappist ales. Because a lot of the other Trappist ales are, you know, darker in color. They're like duples. They're triples, maybe, if they're light. They're uh, quadruples. These kind of beers. Belgian strong dark ales, even. But um, this is pretty much its own. People kind of call it a Belgian pale ale. I think you should maybe just call it Orval, because there's not really any Trappist beer like it. Uh, it's a very new Belgian pale ale that really merges different, you know, ideas and mindsets in the world of brewing. We got German tradition, we got uh, English tradition, we got hops from Germany, hops from Slovenia, hop, and, you know, things like this. So it's, it's a really a, a, a cool combination of different ideas of brewing in a traditional product, which is very nice. Um, I've always loved this beer. I've had it young, I've had it old, but I've never had the petite version. So they do two version, two beers. That's it. The Abbey Monastery only does two beers. And that's this and the Petite Avel, which is the, the low strength version. Uh, they also, I think they also make cheese. Uh, I'm not sure if they do anything else. I've never been, I've never been to Belgium on, on a beer trip. It's crazy. It's not good. I need to. But yeah, this will just, man, I haven't had this beer in a long time. I think. Maybe oh, yeah, a year and a half, a year ago maybe. It's it's a shame because it is a fantastic beer. But yeah, this is exactly six months old. And the reason why I got a bottle that was exactly six months old is because I remembered from back in the day, Michael Jackson said in his mind, this beer peaks at six months. So, you know, that's why I, got, I think I, that's yeah. As I said, it's said with the Michael Jackson beer book. I even mentioned that in the old review. So it's six point two percent alcohol by volume, and they say to serve it around twelve to fourteen degrees. Degrees with this is which this is yeah. I think so right now. I took it out of the fridge for a bit before cracking it. And the big thing in terms of brewing this beer, they you know they have a wet mill. If you know anything about brewing, there's different types of ways to mill your grain. They have a wet mill, not many people use that nowadays. And I know the brewery was, you know, was it in 2008 or something? I got the brewery was uh, renovated. So they got some new equipment. I think they had some filters installed for like some kind of mash filter or something installed for, for mashing or something like that. I'm not entirely sure everything about it, but they did have a lot of new things Installed just to make everything easier. The product still exactly stays the same. So, but the big thing is like they use a very simple malt bill, not loads of dark malt or anything. It's just pale ale malt, maybe a bit of pilsner malt. Some people say, some people say no, it's just pale ale. They don't, you know, disclose the authentic recipe. 
and some caramel ones. Just light them out. Otherwise, you also wouldn't get this color. But uh, that's about it. And then the hopping comes from Styrian Goldings, Stressel Spalt, and Halatau Hasbroker. They themselves just say Halatau. And there's many Halatau variants of, of the classic German Halatau hops. So, but the, that's so far, you know, what they've been talking about. So the, that's pretty much it. So Slovenian hops and German hops, very classic stuff. But the big thing is that after the beer has been fermented, they dry hop it. And they ferment it two to three weeks as well, or fermented, secondary fermented two to three weeks, have it left on CO2 to absorb CO2 and carbonate. But they leave it in conditioning tanks for two to three weeks. And then it's dry hopped as well with fresh whole leaf hops, which is really cool. <laughs> you know, not many brewers do that anymore because it's a bother. And then they bottle it, but it's bottle conditioned, which is where the Brennomyces yeast is introduced. It's also, by the way, when brewing it, they add Belgian candy sugar, light candy sugar. I forgot to mention that, but uh, so it's, it's, it's got a few things in there, which is pretty damn awesome. And then after all this bottle condition, was, I think, was it five weeks or so, something like that? They, they store it at the warehouse. And uh, I think it's cold stored too now. I'm not sure if it was back in the day. But they store it, release it, and it's sold all over the world, which is, you know, that's all about. Fantastic beer. One day I'll go visit the monastery myself. I'm really looking forward to diving. So we talked enough about this beer. And you know, if you don't know anything about Trappist stuff, you can look it out online. But otherwise, it's monks who brew beer, mainly non-profit. Uh, most of the money goes to sustain the monks and the monastery. It's not like they're going to try and earn a ton of money on it. And also, we got to break out the Orval glass. It's so rare I use it, but it's like with all those built-in classic Trappist glasses you have, and some of you guys probably have in your cellars, you don't get to break out that often, but it's nice to finally break it out. They actually say it's best served in this glass, and you're going to get a better drinking experience. It's all, it just feels really nice to drink it out of this glass. So it looks great. Uh, they say they, if you age this beer, the monastery, for more than six months to leave about a centimeter, which I have in the bottle after pouring, and drink the sediment on its own. Don't mix it in with the beer, because it will just or change the flavor. When I just poured it on camera, it looks more, more, much more hazy. It also looks hazy now, but with the light in front of me, there's definitely clarity. There is some light haze to it, Nothing crazy that can both be chill haze, but probably also a little bit of the yeast that's in suspension that got into the bottle or into the glass. You can see the carbonation streaming on the sides of the glass. It looks very effervescent. It's a very well carbonated beer. You can also see like the big head that generates when you're pouring it out, and just like a beautiful golden uh, orange or uh, slightly dark copper color. It just looks fantastic, and a rocky, pillowy head that's going. Fucking nowhere. It looks fantastic. I'm looking forward to this. Let's check out the aroma on Orval for the first time in a long time. Man, this smells really good. Like, I, the thing is, like, Belgian beer is... It's, it's only the funky stuff that I should still really, really enjoy to check out once in a while. Maybe I could expect myself to get a little throwback to triples, because I had a big thing for triples a while back. But I haven't really missed like quads or doubles or whatnot, like brunes, whatever. It's really the funky stuff like this. It's, this is, I think this is the only Trappist beer once in a while it's like, oh man, I, I couldn't really drink it or about when, when I think of it. That's probably also why it's my favorite. But it's just so awesome smelling. It's so bright and fruity. Like compared to the other Trappist ales, it's so much more hoppy, so much more hoppy because it's dry hops. And it's a fun classical hop character of like grassiness and like hedgerow, or hedgerow, nettles maybe. Uh, it's like got some citric components too. It's got some spiciness. But the thing is like, even though it's like these classic hops, it's like Styrian Golding and, and the Swiss Spite and House of Hasbrook up, it's, it's got like those spicy, grassy, floral vibes from these kind of hops, but also citric notes and fruitiness. But what just like brings that all in, all together and amplifies it, is that secondary fermentation with Brettanomyces. It just, 
it gives this spear just such a unique character compared to the other Trappist Ales. And it's so funny because there's so many breweries that's really tried to recreate beers similar to this, but it just, it smells beautiful. It smells so nice. I could smell this beer forever. Yeah, it's that funky, slightly farmyardy hop character, but it's, or hop, eh, hop character, what am I saying? Brettanomyces character, but it's nothing crazy. And then it's like balanced with like fragrant, floral, slightly perfumey hop notes. And it's like, it's got loads of fruity uh, estuary vibes too. Like apple, sweet, sweet, both sweet and green, like tart apples, some pear vibes too. There's almost like biscuity breadiness. It really smells like Belgian beer meets British beer, to be honest. It smells really good. Let's try it, guys. Orvel for the first time in a long time. Now, this is a long ass Orbeck Thursday. Sorry for that. Let's dive in. It's almost like back in the day where I talked for way too long about beer. That is phenomenal. And I even spilled some. Great job. It's probably because the mouth of the glass is so big. That is just so good. It just drinks like, you know, people who's tried to perfect this for a very long time. It's like, you can taste like this is a beer that people have been working on for a very, very long time to get it to where it is. It is fantastic. Man, I miss this beer. Also, what I like compared to some of the other Travis beers, it's like 6.2%, so it's not as strong. It's really well carbonated. That's also one of the things you notice first, like super high carbonation. Um, but it's okay, it like lifts the beer. It's, uh, it lifts it on the palate. It's very dry as well. Like, I, I can't remember fr if fresh old Orval is as dry because I think the, the fermentation will carry on a little bit in the bottle. So whatever sugar is left that the Britannomyces is working on will help dry it out even more, but it's a really, really bone dry beer. And also like a bitter beer, it's like a medium bitter, but not like think IPA bitter, think British beer bitter, maybe a little bit more, seems a, bit, a little bit more bitter than that because it's very dry. And as I said, it's very carbonated. But a really nice, bright, fruity character. Like, again, like, pear and apple and like floral vibes and like slightly perfumey vibes and then you get like like hoppy flavors too of like this they say just like a more like old it's a more classic hop flavor like it's not as fragrant and vibrant i think it's still quite vibrant um at least this bottle right here it's like classic spicy hop character paired with like this like grassy nestle maybe uh, lemony, yeah, black pepper vibes. Just like really nice classic hop flavor that pairs super well with the Brendan Mice's character. Like this like spicy, uh, spicy like this like slightly funky farmyardy uh, flavor. I really think this is such a great beer as well to introduce people to Brendan Mice's and what character it can lend to a beer because it's not like crazy funky with like, all kinds of weird funks. It's really refined funkiness. So it's like very refined because there's like definitely clean beer components to it. And then, you know, like this refined Brett uh, character to it. Insanely the high drinkability as well. And then a little bit of a sweet malt component to it too. Like sweet, doughy, bready malt, freshly baked bread, and like slightly sweet, almost like caramel vibes. They use caramel malt, but it's like very light because it's very fruity. There's almost like, uh, yeah, definitely also like wine grapes, white wine grapes, like dusty grape skin. It's a really complex beer too at 6.2%. Definitely a work of art, this beer. Fuck, I, it's interesting. Like, this is, I, I never revisit classic Trappist Ales, really. This is one, I just, once in a while, I just think of it. It's such a great beer. This is a beer that'd be so fun to get a case of. Have in your cellar and drink one every month just to see how it develops. 
like an Orval project. That would be really cool because it's, yeah, you know, definitely change over time. So yeah, I think I gave it a 92 or a 93 back in the day. Right now, I think I prefer it much more. I'm gonna go 95. This is world class, like funky beer. Belgian Pale Ale Bitter Nemesis. It's, it's just Orval, it's world class Orval. This is a dope ass bottle right here. Um, yeah, 95. It's just really, 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 really good stuff. I don't think everyone agrees with that, maybe. I just love like the fr like just the complexity of this beer is really cool and it's also because it's just it's different it's different than like a lot of the other Belgian beers and so like bright and it's like a little bit funky and all this I, I just really dig everything about Aval I think it's a fantastic beer and interestingly enough earlier before this review I shot two other reviews of modern beers uh, that were nice but I'd much rather drink this it's like a pale ale and a New England IPA they were really nice I would much rather drink this. It's got more refined complexity that is really damn awesome. The others are more like the out there flavors, which was also nice. Don't get me wrong, but man, this is dope. So if you guys never had Orval, you need to change that and do yourself a favor and go out and get yourself, you can probably get a gift box with a glass. You can get that in most places nowadays uh, of Orval and the glass, and you should do that, because it's a fantastic beer. It is, or go to the brewery. I'll have to do that one day, of the monastery. So, long ass Throwback Thursday this time around, guys, but I hope you enjoyed it. This was very fun to revisit, a fantastic beer, so. And this bottle, man, it's, it's really, it's a really good bottling of Orwell. Again, maybe six months is the peak for this. I, I, can, I haven't had, like, different vintages, or just months side by side of this beer, but. It's nice. So if you guys had a chance to try Orval in recent times, specifically a bottle that's six months old, let me know what you thought of it. And let's just give it a swig here. I know this might be blasphemy. Just try it from the bottle with all the sediment. Slightly more muddled flavor. I guess that's why they do not recommend that you pour that in. It's much better like this. Mm-hmm. Nice stuff. So as always guys, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'm gonna say cheers in delicious Trappist beer and see you guys in another beer review. No, a throwback Thursday. Or beer review. Who knows? Cheers.